Today we are traveling to France to visit the home of the very famous Impressionist artist Claude Monet. As we walk up to his front door, take a look around. What do you see? And how does this make you feel? Here we are in Monet's backyard, a scene that he painted over and over and over again. Green lily pads float on the surface of the pond, while lily flowers are scattered here and there. Check out the tree reflections on the water surface in between the clusters of water lilies. Did you notice this Japanese style bridge as you were looking around in Monet's garden? Does this picture feel different from the ones we've looked at? That's because this was taken on a different day and things have changed, like the weather. Claude Monet and the other Impressionists noticed these day-to-day -day changes and tried to capture those different feelings in their artwork. Impressionists had to paint quickly before the changes happened, so that's why their paintings might look a little fuzzy up close. But from a distance, this painting really makes us feel like we're sitting in Monet's backyard. Let's create a picture to remember our visit to Monet's garden, including that pond full of water lilies. The first thing we're going to do is draw that Japanese style bridge. Using a yellow oil pastel, draw a curved line from one side to the other, followed by a parallel curved line. Make sure that you press hard. You might need to go back over it a couple of times to make it really bold. Then draw vertical lines to connect the top and bottom of the bridge together. Impressionists tried to capture the sunlight and shadows in their paintings. I'm going to add shadows under the top railing and along one side of each post using a dark colored pastel like black, purple, or brown. Then I'll add highlights from the sun with white on the other side of each post. I remember that the bridge crossed over a large pond filled with lily pads and flowers. I remember that there were groups or clusters of the lily pads with a few flowers scattered around. I'm going to use an oval shape for my lily pads and short quick lines for the flowers. They don't have to look perfect. I want them to look a little fuzzy or blurry, just like Monet's did. If the lily pads are near the bottom of my paper, that means they are closer to me, the viewer, so they need to be drawn bigger on the paper. Smaller lily pads are farther away and higher up on the paper. I remember large willow trees above the bridge, and I'm going to draw some of those branches hanging down, trying to touch the water below. Since I'm working at the top of my paper, I don't want to smear any of my artwork with my arm, so I'm going to flip my paper around to continue drawing all the leaves on those branches. Now it's time to paint the pond water. I remember seeing so many calm, cool colors in Monet's backyard, so I'm going to add a little bit of water to each of those colored paints. Then I'll prepare my paper for wet on wet painting by adding plain old water to the paper underneath the bridge. Once my paper is wet, I'll simply touch my brush in the color I choose and quickly jump all over the paper. If my paper is wet enough, the paint will begin moving around the paper like it's dancing. If it doesn't, I need to wash out my brush and just add more plain water. It's okay if I paint on top of the lily pads. The watercolors won't stick to the oil pastels. This is called a resist. Before I change to a new color, I have to remember to wash out my brush in the bathtub. Quickly before the paint dries, I'll sprinkle a little salt in the pond water for some texture. Now I need to finish painting my picture. I'll continue painting in the wet-on-wet wet style, 
filling in the rest of the paper with the colors that I remember seeing in the pond water at Monet's garden. Up in the tree branches, I'll add more green to emphasize the colors of the leaves. And if I have any salt left, I'll sprinkle it on the wet paint. Your paintings look beautiful. I hope you enjoyed your visit to Monet's garden.